Mm-hmm. So she was lying on the floor. I know where she was. So I rushed in. I saw the ambulance. I saw the police. So I opened the door. What's going on? I saw my wife lying down on the floor. So they lifted her up. And I just thought, really? You're such a big cry, baby. Because of phone, you're upset. Wow. <laughs> What has been your toughest season, right, in your marriage of 14 years, okay? Because we're talking about overcoming the battle in the mind, mm. even when life hurts. So what has been, mm. like, your toughest season, that challenging time or period for you? And how did you go about overcoming this? Mm. You know, we want to know, we want you to share with us so that people can know because the truth will set people free. Mm-hmm. So please. How long do you guys have? Because um, our our... Our toughest seasons, I don't know, they are competing for competition. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. So you're saying there's many... No, man, Just... I, can, I can give you countless stories. I don't know which is the top. But, but, anyway. but, okay. but look look at the fact that you guys are even still smiling. So I'm oh. I'm already, like, I'm inspired because you guys are still smiling. You're we're laughing. A, a, well, not tough season, but yeah. Anyway, let me, let me allow you to talk. You go. So, um... Your question, um, what was um, toughest season, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so the toughest season is still a tough season, if that wow. makes sense. Wow. So, and I'll explain. Um, so on the 1st of April, 2010, um, I had a brain aneurysm. So wow. a brain aneurysm, for anyone that doesn't know, is where a, um, a vessel in the brain bursts and bleeds. So one of the vessels in my brain bled. Um, sorry, one of the vessels. Yeah, one of the vessels in my brain bled um, and was bleeding for I don't know how many hours. It could maybe it's 13, 14, I don't know. But basically, from around two o'clock in the afternoon till about midnight. Um, blood was bleeding on my um, on my brain. Wow. Um, and it affected my memory. Um, and they they said that it affected my short term memory. I say they, but it did affect my short term memory um, because I could remember my parents when they came and vi- visited. I, I could remember things, um, but I couldn't. It affected my short term memory. Hmm. Um, and short term was pretty much immediate to almost five years. I, I kind of calculated it myself. So just an example would be Aaron would come and visit me when I was in hospital and he would go, to, he could go to the gents, he could go and talk to the doctors and he would come back and I would greet him like I'd seen him for the first time that day. Wow. 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 So, wow. so it's almost life in, what's, what's that term? Um, oh, I've forgotten what it's called. Um, but basically, it was almost like living a life in repeats, like all yeah. all the time. Groundhog Day. Uh, Groundhog Day. That's what I was trying to remember. Yeah. So th- this happened in 2010, and uh, <clears throat> till today, there's I've increased, improved significantly. You can't, can't really compare how I was then to how I am now. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I'm rebuilding myself up. Hmm. I'm rediscovering myself. Um, I'm rediscovering my voice. Hmm. Um, and the reason I say that is because, um, and it's the more that I'm reading and studying um, about the brain, the brain, your memory is what people remember you by. Yeah. So it, it's, it's how, it's what people define you by. Um, so the fact that, there's almost like a question mark over my own memory. Mm -hmm. And when I thought about it, I was just thinking, so who am I? Mm. Um, How are people, how, how do people um, describe me or can they even rely on me? Um, Because as quickly as I would say something and commit to something, I would forget. Mm. Mm. And for some, it could, that could leave a bitter taste in their mouth because, yeah, but I just told you that. I relied on you. Mm. Yet it would seem like, um, I, not on purpose, but I didn't follow through on the things that I said. Mm. And I would say it very confidently, very articulately, um, but in terms of following it through, 
I would, it, it's just something that wouldn't, I just wouldn't remember unless it's being triggered. So it's still something that we're going through. Um, it's still something that I'm building on. Um, but I think it's just one of those, in terms of that from a marriage perspective, um, I feel like even for Aaron, um, he's had to deal with a lot. Mm. And um, so when you say in sickness and in health, that's where that side of it really does yeah. play a huge part. Mm-hmm. So there's there's elements of the vows that have been tested. Mm-hmm. So the words <clears throat> of the, those words mm-hmm. have more meaning for me, let me say, because... You've lived it because the, because yeah. because they it's did. our reality. It's our reality. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's um, you done. I could go on, but go on. Okay, so that's um, so even just what we've done is part of our coping mechanism. Mm-hmm. I have to train myself not to interrupt her. Wow. Because mm-hmm. if I interrupt her, she may forget what she's trying to say. Yeah. Mm. So mm-hmm. that's that's all part of part of the working. So wow. if you notice, you would notice yes. that. Yes. That. <laughs> yes. So now that you say it. Yeah. Because normally I know um, um, Aaron interrupts a lot. Yeah. I know yeah. you interrupt a lot. So but now it makes sense, right? It yeah. Makes sense. It makes sense. My wife with my wife on, I I I have to play down my interruption as much mm-hmm. as possible mm. so that she can speak. So and if finish, it, and, finish and finish. And if you notice with our pattern, I tend to wait for her to speak first. Yeah. Because if I speak, I can take the thoughts in a whole different kind direction of, that yes. may not be what she's trying to say. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's just that in reality, just being, wow. to, show you, to show you what our everyday life is <laughs> like. Is yeah. like, you know, mm-hmm. what, what she's just done is just giving it a brief, a brief. Um, so if, if you would like me to just tell the story quickly and hey guys, if you, Follow her blogs. You'll see her tell her story every day, how she's coping. Mm-hmm. You follow me on Aaron Tierra or even follow me on my on my YouTube here. Yeah. I will tag you on some of the videos mm-hmm. that tells this story if you follow me on YouTube. And I think um, on one of your albums as well, you tell the yeah, story. Yeah, it's also on my album. Um, but yeah. a lot of, if you follow my YouTube, you'll see a lot of videos where I'm mm-hmm. ministering and talking. But mm-hmm. let me give you a brief. So April 1st, 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife was working in Manchester that period. This was, <clears throat> this was the the what's it called the um, um, resurrection week. It was Easter week. It was okay. Easter. Um, so I was I was doing a lot of I was working in properties then and trying to do business. <clears throat> and my wife was working up in Manchester, so she would drive up to Manchester on a Monday and come back on the Thursday. Mm. And I was supposed to go up to Manchester to Liverpool on Thursday mm-hmm. um, to go look at a property. And I begged her to come back home on Wednesday um, so that I could drive up with a friend of mine on Thursday. And mm. she came. So um, we eventually we're having um, a devotion that morning. And so you're going to learn a lot from this story. We're having devotion that morning and devotion mm-hmm. ended up in a quarrel. Wow. wow. Are you? I on a, a where they master this marriage thing from birth, you know. We, <laughs> we um, if you if you if you have a hard call like me in marriage, I mean you have to give Annabelle accolades. Everybody, you if you if you want a good example of a wife, um Okwe is one, Annabelle is one. For oh. Annabelle to be married to me wow. is um <laughs> It's an award. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's, it's wow. A, it's an award and it's on. Um, um, there are times when my conversations with Annabelle is, hey, babe, we're about to fight. They will start fighting. And then I would have let her. <laughs> <laughs> I would have let her ahead of time that I want to fight. Because actually, the very first day, the very first day I ever saw my wife ang- annoyed, I could have thrown a party. I was like, eh, you mean you can get angry? <laughs> I've been pushing <laughs> lady from when we were dating. I was just looking for just get angry. <laughs> just get angry. So the day she turned around and actually screamed at me, like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, my God. When thank people you. are praying for, for God to heal people of anger issues, you're pushing so, to see someone angry. So that's an area where she's yeah. mentored me in, um, mm-hmm. being able to f- push through conversation. So this particular day, as always, um, devotion ended up in a quarrel. Mm. And why? Because well, remember, no, in this particular one anyway, okay. ended up in a quarrel. Mm. Because remember, 
Um, this was the days of BlackBerry Board and BlackBerry Curve. So follow mm. the story. Yeah. Mm. So to get an upgrade, BlackBerry Board and BlackBerry Curve. That's what we're to be given. So I said, well, I'm going to pick up the phones. I'm the head of the house. So I'm going to get BlackBerry Board. You will take BlackBerry Curve. You're and right. Like, You're right, sir. You're right. right. <laughs> You're right. Well, does that happen in your house? <laughs> well... Anyway, let, let, let's not talk. No, it doesn't because I'm using a Samsung Note 9. She's using Note 10. So but yours is bigger and bolder. So and let's, let's carry on. <laughs> so she goes, she goes, why should I get the better phone? I said, but I'm the head of the house. Why should I get the better phone? Yeah, why should I be the one to oh, get the better phone? Mm. I said, but I'm the head of the house. I said, no, what happened to preferring me before? I'm like, <laughs> I love the way you guys are even using scripture. <laughs> to, you're trying to use scripture to even back it up. <laughs> and it was devotion. I'm like, ah, that scripture does not follow phone now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I stepped out of the house, went to car phone warehouse then to go pick up the phones. And this particular day, I just felt like a really good Christian. So mm. people in the UK, this is not Nigeria, this is not Lagos. People were actually shunting in front of me. And I'm like, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. People, I, I was just, I didn't know. Later did I know something was going on in my house. Wow. So one hour, eventually I got home and then I saw the police and the ambulance trying to break into my house. Wow. So I got in and I said, what's going on? And they said, somebody had called. Now, when I left the house, my wife, I'm going to give you really a brief version. Um, so guys, follow me and um, get my music or something. You'll find it. So someone had called. So when I left her, my wife was on a conference call at work. Mm-hmm. She was lying on the floor. I know where she was, but somehow somebody had called and I'll tell you what had happened. So I rushed in. I saw the ambulance. I saw the police. So I opened the door. What's going on? You said mm-hmm. somebody had called. So I opened the door. And when I went up, I saw my wife lying down on the floor. So the ambulance service walked in. They walked in. They lifted her up. And I just thought, really? You're such a big cry, baby. Because of phone, you're upset. Wow. <laughs> Seriously? So she oh was, my God. was lying down Guys, on the floor. I hope you're listening. I hope you're was listening. lying down on the floor, not saying anything, mm-hmm. really. So they lifted her up. They put her on the bed. And she wasn't saying anything. So they asked us, have you had a quarrel? I said, not, not, not seriously. So they checked, they checked their house to find out, did we have, did we take any drugs? Wow. So they started searching the house, went to a drug cabinet because she, she was just looking at us, but wasn't saying anything. Wow. So just, I, was, I was conscious, but unconscious at the same time. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Typically when you say somebody's unconscious, they're normally sleeping and yes. not moving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she was awake wow. and just looking. So I'm, I was just there. I said, when, when we're done with this story, mate, we'll settle this thing. Seriously, just because of the food, uh, you're acting like this. So I was still my playful self thinking this mm-hmm. is serious. All of a sudden, when they said they were going to strap her and take her to the car, that's when they hit me. This is not a, into the ambulance, this is no longer a joke. Something actually is going on. Can mm-hmm. I beg men? Men, be prayerful. I know mm. I know we have this thing where we leave our women to pray and all that. Men, better be the person that's praying. Mm. Now, the day before I had attended the service, and I remember telling a friend of mine, one of my mentees, and I said, I said, something is coming. I sensed it in my spirit. I said, something is coming. Mm. And I said, whatever that thing that is coming, I'm going to stand my ground. Mm. That was what I said. I said, something is coming. I actually went to a different service in another church. And mm-hmm. I just sensed that something was coming. And because I'm the artist, I'm the guy on the road and things like that. I just generally felt it would be me, mm. not necessarily my wife, you know. So I'm I'm praying, I'm speaking in tongues, I'm sensitive. I didn't think that the devil will be hitting my wife. So I was ready. I was spiritually ready for whatever is coming. Mm. And guess what? This was April Fool's Day. April Ooh, Fool's Day. Yes. I'm texting all my friends. And I'm saying to guys, I don't know what's going on with Annabelle. Guys, I need help. Everybody will type back, April Fool, April Fool, April Fool. Wow, Everybody, can you imagine? Yeah, as far as even I had a pastor friend who was like 10 minutes away from my house. The wife told him over the phone while I was talking, don't mind him, everyone is in April Fool. Wow. Yeah. So everybody, as far as everyone was concerned, I was doing it was it was Aaron again um playing this big trick, <laughs> April Fool. So nobody's calling me back, nobody's responding. But one of my friends sent something. He sent a text. He said, stand your ground, sir. When I got that text, something triggered a remembrance of what I had said the day before. Mm. And I switched. Mm. I knew in my spirit straight away that I was in a battle. Mm. So in that moment, I allowed them to take my wife. I picked up the phone. I called my mom. I said, mom, your daughter is not saying that's my mom. I said, mom, 
your daughter is not saying anything to me. That's mm-hmm. how I described it. She said, put the phone on her ears. I put the phone on her ears. My mom finished praying. I called my pastor's wife, who's very close to her, to pray. And then I said, I said, we're going to the hospital. So I drove behind them, got to the hospital, possibly another two hours, nobody came. Then eventually my pastor, my ex-pastor, my pastor, who she was talking about, and the wife, the pastor came. Um, mm-hmm. I was still so sure we're going home. I wasn't... I had no clue what was going on. Mm. But what had happened was when we got to the hospital, they've seen this situation so many times. So they were waiting for her to die. Mm. They were so sure that she was going to die. Wow. Everybody, if you go Google aneurysm, 97% of people who have an aneurysm don't make it. Yeah. It's just me feeling spiritual. I'm in the hospital. I'm speaking in tongues, pacing everywhere and speaking in tongues. And they walked up to me and told me that, hey, if you continue speaking in tongues, we can't help your wife. Wow. Right? That's what he told me in the hospital. Yeah, if you continue speaking in tongues, we can't help your wife. Wow. So I told them, I said, look, what I'm doing is the very thing that would help my wife. Mm-hmm. So guess what? <laughs> guess what? They kicked me out of the hospital. My <gasps> wife is in the hospital. They got security to kick me out of the hospital. So I'm outside speaking in tongues and just being. So this was 12 o'clock. We got to the hospital. Eventually, around 8 p.m., <clears throat> giving you really a brief version, around 8 p.m., they did a scan. And that's when they found out she had been bleeding in the brain all the while. So everything started happening fast. They called me to the room. They said, this is the situation. You're this and this and that, 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 that. So they stopped her working by herself and started trying to give her oxygen and everything because all this while she should not have been trying to do anything mm-hmm. by herself. Mm. So at this point, I called another mentor of mine, Pastor Tyler Dukoy. I said, this is the situation. He prayed. And then I said, let's go. So he started looking for a hospital in London. I stay on the outskirts of London. Started looking for a hospital in London. They couldn't find quick, quick versions. Eventually, we got to a hospital in London at 12 midnight. And I remember so how long how long had it been now? Twelve um, hours. She had bled. Twelve hours. Twelve hours. Wow. She had bled for twelve hours. So eventually, we got to the hospital at twelve midnight. My friends now started maybe believing something is really wrong because it was we the next day. Now it was no longer April Fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can't really reach yes. around what's going on. I blanked everybody. I remember getting into the hospital, and the uh, the doctor walked up to me and said to me, "Are you Mr. Aaron?" I said, "Yes." He said, um, "I've seen the scans. I've seen the pictures." Your wife, Annabelle, would die imminently. That was his words. Your wife, Annabelle, would die imminently. I said to him, I said, sir, you do what you know how to do. We will do what we know how to do. And I stepped out of the hall. I said, go ahead and do what you need to do. So at this time, I walked out and I saw some of my friends coming in. Everybody was speaking in tongues and praying and all that. And I just stepped in the foyer. I'm an artist and I just sang. And I can tell you the songs I sang, but that's another day. I sang, we lift your name high. I just started singing and I watched it for about one and a half hours. And then they called me and said to me, hey, after one and a half hours, they called me and said to me, um, the operation has been successful, um, but your wife is not out of the woods yet. She's going to be a vegetable. She's going to have stroke, um, this and this and that, that, that. They said all kinds of things. Um, I was on adrenaline. I was on what you call the Holy Ghost adrenaline. You know, so I'm sorry, can I just um, ask a question there? So at this point where they were giving you this, all of this, you know, bad news, for want of a better word. What what were you thinking? No, the bad news hasn't point? come. Bad news hasn't even come then. Wow. They just told us that she's out of the... So, you know, somebody's gone, had an operation. So, you know, mm. okay, fine. So, bad news hadn't come. That wasn't the reality of the bad news. So, as far as I'm concerned, she's fine. She's had an operation. So, I went home. <laughs> I went home that night, told everybody, hey, guys, go home. She's going to be fine. She's going to be all right. Just mm. because I've always been the guy who's strong for everybody. So I, I was still in my character of everything is going to be fine. So I went home. And guys, if you're listening, if you're a Christian, there is something called about words, the power of words. And I went home and I went into the scripture and I took out an A4 sheet and I started writing every scripture God had given me concerning my wife and marriage. Mm-hmm. I put it on a sheet of paper. I can still share it with as many people. I share with people around the world who are going through Sickness, such type of sickness. Mm-hmm. And I called it Annabelle's Confession. Mm-hmm. It was an A4 sheet of paper. I had every scripture God had given me concerning my wife and every scripture about my wife. I just put it in there. That was it. Mm. Feeling like a bad boy, Christian, child of God, um, um, child of a minister, the word of God works, you know, nothing. The devil can't touch us. The devil picked the wrong battle, proud and all that. Called my prayer partner. I said, we're going to the hospital. I remember taking, let's say this is the A4 sheet of paper. So I walked into ICU with that boldness, with a paper. When I saw my wife, when that paper dropped from my hand, (laughs) I had no clue where the paper dropped from my hand because I couldn't recognize her. 
literally wow. could not recognize her. She had all these things all around over her face, covered and everything. And this was me supposed to be strong to come and speak, in, to come and do whatever. And, you know, my wife would just wake up like Lazarus. I would just go home, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. So I just ended up crying. I was just there crying and, and, and singing and worshiping. And all of a sudden, I got a tap on my back. Now, I remember the first hospital I was kicked out. So I get a tap on my back and this nurse tapped me and says, whatever you're doing, keep doing. I said, why? So I was singing a song that says, um, um, you are the pillar that holds my my mm-hmm. life. Yeah. That's what I was singing. I was singing under my breath, just really singing. And the woman tapped me and said, whatever you're doing, just keep doing. I said, why? The woman said, the more you were singing, the more your wife was moving. She has not moved all night. Wow. wow. Glory that to That moment, God. I raised my voice. I started singing. You are the pillar that holds her life. And the more I sang, my wife was becoming more violent. The more I sang, she was becoming more violent. Glory so after Glory a while, um, they said they needed to take, um, they, they said she was trying to take the air support. Mm-hmm. And they've been helping her breathe all night. <laughs> I'll end soon. They've been helping her breathe all night. So eventually I said, you know what? Take it off. Mm-hmm. I said, look, if we take this air support from your wife, your wife is gone. I said, but I can't say, because at the time it looked as if something was hooked to her tongue and it did look like she was going to pull it out. So I was worried about that really. No, nothing else. <clears throat> so they got the doctor. I said, yeah, take it off. They took it off. And that was the last time my wife needed air support. Wow. They took it off. Yeah. We moved from there to that same day. We moved from there to the world. Then the back to your question, the bad news came. Hmm. It came and told us that, look, fine, your wife made it, but now your wife is a vegetable because every information they were giving her, she wasn't retaining. So I walk into the room. She won't remember. She would ask, where are we? Are we in Ghana? Are we in Lagos? Wow. Are we? In? That was it. She couldn't remember my birth date. She couldn't remember anything. Now, this, this part of, she was in hospital for 43 days. Actually, no. It took 43 days to lick out the blood yeah. that bled in 12 hours. Oh, wow. So my wife for 43 days had a tube just trying to lick out the blood to tell you how serious our body is. It wow. took 43 days just to lick out the blood before wow. they can even start any form of help <laughs> for her. They needed to get the blood out. But oh. anyway, hey, she's here. A brief version as always. I can mm-hmm. tell you so many other stories. But when you talk about, so people ask me, um, what was my mindset? In yes. that period, I just that's, believed God. But listen, I was going through a hell challenge in that period. I was going through a hell challenge. In fact, I was supposed to be going for an operation hmm. in that period. So I watched God help heal her. Mm-hmm. And I'm asking God, man is small now. Just mm-hmm. <laughs> touch just this thing and heal me. Mm. So I was in the hospital every single day for 43 days in pain. Wow. In the pain of my own, <laughs> of my pain. own sickness. I can't leave that to go. I'll be looking for any hospital or anything. Mm-hmm. I lost properties in that period. I lost businesses. I lost everything because every single day I was in the hospital. I have tenants who were trashing properties. I had people who were calling me every single day I was in hospital. That then made me realize that a lot of all these things we're chasing is nothing. Hmm. Oh. In that moment, not the money, not the job, not the hmm. car, not the properties. None of that meant anything hmm. again. Hmm. There was, she I wanted to go to Liverpool. I couldn't even go anywhere. Hmm. My life came to a grinding halt wow. for a whole year, you know, but I still had some crazy things. My wife went into hospital on Friday, on Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they were good. I was going to minister somewhere and the pastor called and said, you're not coming. I said, I'm coming. So I still went to minister on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, on Sunday, I was ministering in church. I was not going to allow the devil take my voice. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to, I guess the moral of that story is you have to believe I know what you really believe. Mm, and mm. singles if you're listening or whoever is li- better know who you really married because there were times the prognosis was terrible i remember the doctor telling me clearly i remember the doctor telling me clearly your wife will never have her memory back and wow. i said to the doctor i said come how dare you say that and i went to my wife i said baby who am i and my wife said my husband i said that's all you need really? to know if you know who your husband is you're coming out exactly. i don't need you to know any other person's name yes I don't know exactly any- yeah. But if you know, you don't need to remember because for them, they were giving her information and she wasn't retaining. Mm-hmm. I said, that's fine. But she knows who her husband is. If she knows who her husband is, then it's all right. We will, mm-hmm. we will work it out. We will mm-hmm. figure it all out. Mm-hmm. And the, 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 the end of the story was eventually, um, how did she get out of hospital? Even though she'll probably be in the hospital now. One day I told him, I said, give me my wife to take home. 
Hmm. I just I just walked up to them. I said, it's bank holiday. I'm tired of coming to the hospital every day. Give me my wife to take home. So we, we went through all that rancor and everything. I eventually took her home. And everything they told us could happen. Why? One, they said she will burn the house. Um, she can never drive again and all that kind of stuff. When I got into the house, husbands, well, husbands, don't go out and do what I did. I'm radical. So let me just let me just put it there. I'm radical. If you know me, I'm crazy. <laughs> I drove past my house. Hmm. And my wife said, that's the way to the house. I said, really? For somebody who didn't have a memory. I said, are you sure? She said, yes. Wow. I said, okay, lead us home. And she led us home. I said, wow. all right. Now they told us you must never drive. As soon as we got to the house, we didn't even get to the car. As soon as we got to the house, I said, baby, drive. Come and drive. And she sat down. Now, before you shoot me, I would explain why. My wife is one of the only women I know, or only human beings I know that drives automatic with two legs. I don't know how she do it. Does it. <laughs> You know, I don't know, but my wife <laughs> drives automatic with two legs. She will balance it normally. I've tried it many times. The car will feel like it wants oh. some assault, but she balances automatic with two legs. So I wanted to check if the balance was still there. Mm. And she drove normally. As soon as we got into the house, I said, babe, go and cook. Wow. So everything. everything not even so, rest. Not even no, rest no, no, no. after everything. Every, everything they said not to do, I did it immediately. Oh, I said, babe, God. I'm, I sat down in the in the lounge and I was watching her because they said she could burn the house if she cooks. Mm. So if, if if at least the house was going to burn, I can be watching where the house is burning from. Mm-hmm. So I, <laughs> I wow. sat down and I was watching. And she cooked normally and gave us food. I said, what's wrong with these people in the hospital? Are they all right? Mm-hmm. So she rested over the weekend. Now, before we left the hospital, um, she was scored three over 10 every single day for her memory. Three over 10. Wow. She wasn't retaining any information. By the mm. time I took her to hospital on Monday, they scored her seven, eight over 10. I said, wow. Right. Hospital is not working. Home is working. Give me my wife. That's how we got out of the hospital. Just wow. The wow. You know, I've, I think I've heard this story. This is my third time hearing it. So from you at um, your worship concert, mm-hmm. then I've heard it from Ayo as well. Mm-hmm. And I've heard it this time as well. And it still gives me chills. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even though I know you, I've seen you, I've been in your house and watched you like, it, it still gives me chills, mm-hmm. chills in the sense of God is just like his mercy is unspeakable. Mm-hmm. Then also chills in the sense of the way you guys handled it. Like mm-hmm. for me, a lot of people would have just one accepted that the, diag- the diagnosis mm-hmm. and two, and obviously not this, this is human beings. This idea that, I don't think you ever once felt sorry for yourselves. Like, why? All why right, so let me balance that. Because okay. it's important when we give testimonies uh-huh. to, give you the, to give you the perspective. Mm-hmm. When after one, two weeks, and it really did look like my wife may never have her memory. Do you know what it means to go in every time and your wife does not recognize yes. you? Mm-hmm. Every single time. Mm-hmm. I used to say, if you know me very well, I'm very, I'm, I believe in prayer walks. Mm-hmm. I literally used to go on prayer walks at night. And this was my prayer. God, maybe I made a mistake by praying this woman to life. Mm. So let me give you the reality check. Mm. So I started praying prayers like, God, if it was your desire that she should go, maybe you can take her away. I apologize. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 that was my reality because, so back to your question of for better, for worse in sickness, mm-hmm. It hit me at that point. Mm. That if my wife is going to be vegetable, like they said, there's no runs from you. There's no side chick. There's mm-hmm. no other babe. This becomes my lot. All my purpose, wow. all the things I teach, your goals, your vision, everything. All that is gone. My mm-hmm. goals, my vision at that point means I'll be dragging this woman around. Mm-hmm. So the reality of my life hits me. Yeah. That this is for real. This now mm-hmm. becomes my new purpose. That mm-hmm. my new purpose will be to take care of this woman till the day she eventually goes. Wow. And the reality of that was not sweet at all. So mm. at that point, I started trying to negotiate with God. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe, you know, we didn't have children then. So that was fantastic, right? So mm. there was no children. So maybe, that, maybe, maybe I missed out on a divine plan by God, you know, and, and just dragged this woman back on earth when God was, mm-hmm. those were the, those were the contents of my prayer. Mm-hmm. You no, know, many nights, that was what I was praying. But when I showed up in the hospital, I was a bad guy. Mm. <laughs> but when I go home, <laughs> that was, maybe the doctors are right. Maybe the mm. doctors are right. 
but that's the reality of that. Do you think, do you think just going on from what you were saying about um, having to show up, you know, as a, a bad guy, I think what we're trying to say obviously is, you know, just showing up as a strong man, isn't mm-hmm. it? But, you know, behind, you know, you also had, you know, to kind of cry behind the scenes. You also had to kind of feel like, oh my God, this weight is too much for me. Do you mm-hmm. think that that's something in terms of the responsibility of a man, like the man being like the protector, the man being like, okay, I am, I need to, be strong for my family. Is that, is that, would you say that was why you were acting that way? Maybe it came from there, but I'm not sure. Maybe it came from there. So if you know me very well, I'm the guy who's strong for everybody. Mm. I'm, I, I, I can be going through stuff, but the moment I see human beings, I'm a whole different beast. My wife doesn't understand that. You know, mm. I'm, I'm, that's me. The moment I come in, in with people, um, I'm, I'm different. I'm different. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what had also helped is guys, if you're listening, get to know God and get to know your Bible. I okay. think there was a strong conviction and confidence that I have in God. So I've seen my wife, I've seen my mom go through, we get to the hospital and the doctors are like, if you didn't come in in the last one hour, you were dead. She didn't even know she was having a heart condition. Her heart was already gone. You know, I've seen, so I grew up watching those things. I've seen, I've seen armed robbers attack my mom in Lagos in Shomalu, and my mom turn around and say, um, you can't shoot me in Jesus' name. And then they wow. will shoot and nothing will happen. And they will shoot to the side, the, bu- the bullets will crack. And then they will shoot my mom and nothing will happen. Um, so I, I grew up around faith. And my mom would tell you that I'm the child who taught her fate. I was the child who didn't cry. I hmm. came out, they, they had already packed me in a bag. And then after yeah. a while I sneezed. And sh- so it, there was a strong confidence. I, I had this confidence in God. Mm-hmm. that he was going to do something. How he was going to do it, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that was it. I, and it's not, it wasn't even just a strong confidence in God. I had a strong confidence in the word of God. Mm. That if, because so what used to happen those 43 days, the hospital said they can't have more than two people. I invited all my friends to the hospital. When you come to the hospital, I'll give you Annabelle's confession. I'll say, you go in there. You don't say, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, no, no, no. You go there, you declare. Mm. And that's what everybody was doing. So I used to bring, I literally, my job in the hospital was I was arranging my friends two by two because the doc, the hospital said they don't want more than two. So mm-hmm. I'll make sure there are two people at any point. Mm-hmm. So I will feed people. I will give everybody, every food people are giving me, we'll eat it together in the hospital. Mm. I'll them in. You, you recite, you just come there. You, you speak the word of God, not even prayer. I'm mm-hmm. directing, this is what we are saying every single day. You speak the word of God, you pray, you don't do, you make her laugh. And all mm-hmm. that, and you go. Mm-hmm. No, oh my God, is she going to do this? No yeah. crying, no nothing. So mm-hmm. I had this strong sense of confidence in the word oh, of God, in yeah, the I word of that. God. And and let me just say that that the more of the word of God you know, the bolder you become. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You hear that. The more of the word of God you know, the bolder you become. Mm. So and, and and that's where it came from. That's guys, guys, guys. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, guys. Well. Thank you for, for sharing this story. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to confirm. I hope you're listening. Are you still here on Zoom? I don't know. I feel like Zoom seems quiet or something is wrong. But on YouTube, we're seeing your comments. We're seeing your comments, Okay. Yeah. Um, I hope you guys are really getting something from here, okay? Mm-hmm. This story is so powerful. And, you know, there are so many lessons to draw out from everything that has been said or that is being said, okay? So, guys, please take note. Remember confidence in God. Remember what you're speaking, to speak life. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And you mentioned something there, you know, speaking those words of affirmation Mm -hmm. and life. And in marriage, this is something that you would have to do on a daily basis. I mean, you know, we've not even had anything close to, you know, what Aaron and Annabelle have gone through. And, you know, this was only four years into Into their marriage. Mm -hmm. So this incident happened four years into the marriage. And by God's grace, 10 years after, here they are. Sure. And Annabelle said something so very it's key. It's important to add that. So a lot of people, just to give a perspective, let me yeah. introduce my wife to you. So you said this happened four years into the marriage. Mm-hmm. And I like what you guys said earlier on about the test and the different seasons. Mm-hmm. There were things that had happened before this time. Wow. So you will be tested in many ways. Mm-hmm. There were things that had happened before this time that mm-hmm. where my wife stood up for me. Mm. My marriage could have been done six months in marriage mm. because of some little girl somewhere. 
Wow. Mm. Wow. Six months in the marriage. So because mm-hmm. what happens is when we tell this story, everybody sees me as the bad guy, mm. man of God. But mm-hmm. the real woman of God is this woman. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? So mm-hmm. there were there were things. So when 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 people talk about for better or worse and da 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 da. You mm-hmm. are all going to be equally tested in different ways. I love Leah that. Yeah, that's it. When it came to her health, but she had been tested with, we have been tested with our finances. Mm. She had been tested when some little lady almost showed up and crashed our marriage. Within wow. six months of marriage, mm. my wife stood for the marriage. I love that. Do, do, do you understand? I so love see, that. Those from the first day we got married, there were tests. We don't have time to tell you all those stories. I can mm-hmm. tell you about how my wife completely lost trust in me. Yeah. My wife wasn't the time to be checking your phone and all that. Those first four years were hell. She was always mm. checking my phone. She mm. was. She didn't. Do, do, do you understand? Yeah. But yeah. we went through all that. We mm-hmm. went through all that. We God restored trust. Mm-hmm. Between us, mm-hmm. nothing happened. Not that I slept with anybody or nothing. Mm-hmm. None of that happened. Yeah. But this situation was so much that it could have destroyed the marriage if yeah. my wife did not stand. Did not yeah. stand for yeah. us, right? That was one. Our yeah. finances, I had made bad investments, lost money, all that kind of stuff. In fact, mm-hmm. at the time, all that while my wife was the only person working at the particular time. She was the yeah. only one. She was the she was the breadwinner. She was I was trying to do businesses. Everything I did mm-hmm. was she was the only one working. When mm-hmm. we were in so much debt, she was the one to take her salary. She would take her salary and pay the lady who was causing trouble for me. Nobody knows how we were eating. Wow. She just made up her mind that this wow. lady was not going to have authority mm-hmm. over this marriage. So she had paid the price before my my own test. So you had to pay. I love exactly. that. Exactly. So everyone mm-hmm. is going to go through a test. So mm-hmm. if you, have you made up your mind? You're going to be tested in marriage. You're going to be tested. Be it money, be it um, yes. the loss of the flesh, be it health. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Whatever is thrown at us, I am going to be here. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and, and guys, and thank you so much. Once again, I, I just hope you guys are just, I are taking a lot from this because understand this, that the reason why a lot of marriages crash and the reason why a lot of people are in unhappy, unfulfilled or, you know, separation or whatever, or divorce is because when some of these tests happen, right? Somebody checks out, somebody says, listen, I can't do this any longer, but you need to understand that the test will come no matter how much you are praying. Do you understand? Like you will all go through a season. You will go through a tough time. You go through tests. Okay. But understand that, listen, we are in this together. Mm -hmm. It's not the time to say, I'm giving up on you. It's not the time to say, oh no, you are a mistake. Mm -hmm. The reason why people keep getting remarried and remarried is because they feel I married the wrong person. No, sir. You did not marry the wrong person. You're just going through that test, right? And eventually you will come out and you will come out stronger and better. But at that point, you need each other. And how do you strengthen each other at that point is by, as my brother said, you know, your knowledge of the word of God, you know, your prayer life, you're praying together, you're worshiping together, you're growing together in God and building that confidence in God, what I like to call God-fidence together is what will take you through your tough times and tough seasons. Mm. Okay. So this is just a story that, you know, has been paraphrased and, you know, I'm sure that, and maybe another time in the future, we might, we might probably have to it's bring still it ongoing. back. It's still our story, but you may want yeah. to hear from her. So mm-hmm. if you have anything you want to add to that, because some of your, some of your, some of your followers are hating on me that this boy talks too much. 